Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tommy with the Fastlane Car, and in this video, we're gonna answer a simple question. What is it like to live with a car powered by hydrogen? Because behind me is the brand new Toyota Mirai, and in 2021, believe it or not, you can go out and buy brand new a couple of cars that are powered not by gasoline, not by electricity, but by the most abundant element in the universe, hydrogen. So we're gonna see what it's like to drive, we're gonna see what it's like to fill up a car with hydrogen and get the full ownership experience. So let me introduce you to my ride for the day, the brand new Toyota Mirai. This thing is so cool. Now you probably have never seen one of these in the real world because of course hydrogen cars are currently only for sale in the state of California. But you can not only buy these cars, you can also lease them. We've got keyless entry and welcome to the interior. Now the interior in the Mirai is just as nice as the exterior. It may have a Toyota badge on it, but this thing is through and through Lexus. It really is that nice. Leather seating surfaces, leather across just about every material, giant instrument cluster. Everything you touch feels like a vehicle that costs 60 plus thousand dollars because of course this vehicle does cost 60 plus thousand dollars. I present to you the Monroni. Let's see here. Total price $68,540. What is it like to start up a hydrogen powered car? Well, my seat belt on. Is it going to sound like a flux capacitor? Key in the pocket, foot on the brake, push the start button. Couple beeps, couple bongs. That's it. Absolute pure silence. There's no whooshes, there's no crazy, I don't know, grinding noises or buzzing noises. It's just like starting up an electric car because at the foundation, a hydrogen vehicle is an electric car. So let's go ahead and put it into drive. We do have a transmission selector that's very similar to what you'd find in a Prius. All right, so now that we're on the main road, how does a hydrogen vehicle work? What are the fundamentals? Well, it really is pretty simple in theory and very complicated in reality. So I am sitting on top of three tanks which store hydrogen at about 10,000 PSI. Now that hydrogen is sent to something called the fuel cell which is located underneath the hood and the fuel cell is a very clever piece of technology that combines oxygen from the air with hydrogen from the tank to create water. Now in the process of creating water, it creates a little tiny zap of electricity, and if you have enough zaps of electricity, you've got propulsion through an electric motor. Very simple in its kind of thought process, but very complicated in reality, if that makes sense. Now, there's a little bit more to it. There's also a high voltage battery like you'd find on a hybrid car. It's about 1.24 kilowatt hours, so it is a small, High voltage battery considering like a tesla is 100 kilowatt hours but then again it doesn't need a high voltage battery that's 100 kilowatt hours because as you drive along the fuel stack is making electricity to propel you down the road and then the battery just kind of fills in the gaps for example under hard acceleration you kind of have to build up that electricity production through the hydrogen fuel cell so that's where the uh that's where the battery fills in the gap. So I pulled over here to a gas station. I wanted to see what the fuel prices were at this station in just a random station in San Diego. 479, 487, 509, 491. So it's getting expensive. Um, yeah, I mean, you'd be like talking 100 bucks or so if you filled up 20 gallons. I wanna try something I've always wanted to do, filling up a car with hydrogen. Now there are 47 stations here in the state of California. I've never done it. I assume many of you have never seen it done, but apparently there is one just around this corner. So, well, this is a Shell gas station. I mean, is there, is there a hydrogen station here as well? I don't know, let's, let's find out. All right, pulling in. The navigation took me here. Oh, look at this. There is a hydrogen station and there there are four cars waiting. Is this for real right now? This can't be right. Okay, so we've got a first generation Mirai, a Nexo, another first generation Mirai, another Mirai, and then a brand new Mirai. Now there are one, two, three, four, five gas pumps, and I assume they're all double-sided, so that's 10 different 10 different places to fill up with gasoline, but of course just one, one hydrogen station. 
Let me go talk to the Toyota guy. So this is actually, uh, they had this set up for us Toyota folks. All right. Hey. So Norm, question for you. Yes. So four cars lined up. Typically, how long will that take? About a half hour. About half an hour. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because they got to pull up, do their car, lock it into place. And when the machine has been used a lot, yep. there's, there's been about 20 cars through here today. Yep. Um, it goes even slower. So the more it gets used, the colder it gets, the slower it goes. Interesting. So that's why we're at about a 20 minute wait, as well as the nozzle is starting to freeze onto the, the nipple. So here's the, 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 the predicament I'm in. So there's four cars lined up for hydrogen. Uh, we've got this gentleman, Norm, um, who is, you know, helping out with uh, this Toyota event and is showing us journalists how to use it. But of course, this is a publicly open and available charging station. Damn it. So that is way longer than I was expecting. Uh, one of the benefits of hydrogen, of course, is that it's been pitched as a fast way to fill up your vehicle and like an electric car where you have to wait um, for the vehicle to charge but 25 minutes to fill up four cars doesn't seem doesn't seem great to be brutally honest with you and I just looked up another hydrogen station near me and I couldn't find find one close by. Norm was right. Norm is the guy working with Toyota. It was about 20 minute wait, but it was actually super fun because there's like a great sense of community and people talking about their hydrogen experience. It's kind of like what electric cars were like a few years ago. So the first thing you need to do is push the fuel filler button. Okay. So that's going to pop that open. Yep. And then this is that's the nozzle. This is a dust cap. Okay. Yep, and that's the nozzle. Yep. Gotcha. So can you explain? So it was H35 and H70. Okay. H35 is pressure. Okay. It's not the grade of fuel. So it's the same hydrogen fuel. It's just this is 5,000 pounds and this is 10,000 pounds. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So you can fill or you can put H35 into an H70 vehicle, but it'll only fill it halfway. Interesting. Okay. So okay. it's based but on the you pressure. You can't put H70 into an H35 vehicle. Gotcha. Because that's too much pressure. Okay, so one, so we're gonna use H70, and then it's price per kilogram, so we're at 16 bucks. So when you buy a Mirai, they give you a special credit card that gives you $15,000 worth of free hydrogen, which is just absurd. Um, and then you can see the machine layout is pretty much the same as to what you'd find from a gas station. So you have a little keypad, you got a little screen, you've got the option to print a receipt, and then rather than having 87 and 89 and 91, you've got H35 for 5,000 PSI and then H70 for 10,000. This is a nozzle, so there's like a collar, right? So that... what you do is you hold on to this black handle. Yep. You pull back on the blue until yep. you cover up the green. Put it on, push out forward, give it a little tug, make sure it's connected, and then you push your grade. Check that out. And then there's like a hiss. And like, I, I guess that's it. There's just like yeah. hydrogen entering the vehicle now. Yeah. Wild. So what Norm has been saying and what kind of the, the general consensus is that um, you'll actually get a huge burst of cold that can cause the nozzle to stick to the vehicle. Um, and then luckily it's a warm day. So hopefully that, that doesn't happen too badly, um, but that can prevent you from actually getting getting unhitched from the station. And then look, it slowly, it slowly counts up, huh? So it is like physically cold yeah, to the touch. It's, it's freezing. Yeah, super interesting. Okay, so if it's not frozen, what you do is hold on to the black portion, pull this back, and we have success. So was that, can we see the infrared sensor in the? It's this piece right here. Interesting, that so one? that's what communicates with the car. Right. And then if it is frozen, there's condensation out there. Yeah. See it? Yeah, it's cold. See how cold but it is. This is the sensor that reads. That goes to the car. Yeah. So have you had like a situation where you have to like play with it to get it oh, off? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've had it where I, especially in the evening, I had to wait five minutes. I couldn't get it off. I just had to. Sometimes I bring my wife with me. She has warm hands. I got her holding her hand. <laughs> well, that was quite the enlightening experience actually coming to this hydrogen station i'm really glad i took this opportunity to see what it's like to fill up one of these vehicles so filled up we were there filling up physically for just a matter of, of two or three minutes 
the car is saying 239 miles of range um, Toyota claims 402 but of course that number is going to change pretty substantially based on how you drive the vehicle now was it a good experience um, yes and no uh, so the payment process was really really simple I was actually kind of poking around some of the other owners who were filling up and some of them actually had a really hard time disconnecting the nozzle because it would freeze into place on the vehicle that's how cold the hydrogen filling process gets but it felt very safe it felt very controlled now kind of a mixed mixed bag there were there were a bunch of folks there and I, I talked to all of them off camera um, the first lady the Nexo was just fed up with it she she was not enjoying the hydrogen experience she said there's always problems with the equipment from a pump standpoint there's always big lines and she was just done with it the next lady was also um, in a Mariah, brand new Mariah. I talked to her for a little bit and she loved it. Like she really didn't have a lot of complaints with the car. She loved the car. The uh, hydrogen filling situation was pretty simple. And the final guy I talked to said he loved the car as well, um, needs more infrastructure. Um, but apart from that, he was really over the moon about the car and he paid $25,000 for his Mariah. 25 grand back in May. Uh, just from you know the incentives and then of course the credits and that's basically what his his net net out the door is going to be is 25 grand so I did spend you know 20 minutes waiting in line for the four vehicles in front of me to fill up if there were more uh, pumps that would be significantly quicker and then of course some owners were saying too you have to check on the uh, the app to make sure that the station has hydrogen because they can physically run out of hydrogen and then you're not filling anything up but uh, an interesting experience really glad I did it if you just show up you're the only one there I think you could pretty quickly be out of there in three or four minutes flat if you can get the nozzle to unhook on the first try um, but really interesting really really interesting is it as easy as filling up a gasoline vehicle no is it quicker than filling up an electric car even with the weight I personally think yes if you wanted to go 0 to 80 even with that 20 minute wait I took you'd be lucky to do that in any electric car so yeah very enlightening experience so what is it like driving a hydrogen powered vehicle well it's like driving an electric car there is almost no difference you have the instant torque that you'd expect of an electric car you have the quietness the smoothness the lack of shifting because at its core once again it's an electric car but rather than storing its energy in a battery it creates it from the fuel cell so the overall driving characteristics are very similar to you know the power delivery of a full-on battery electric however there are some differences one of the most interesting is that when you go to floor it there's a little whooshing noise <laughs> and here's what's happening there's kind of like an electric I don't know, turbocharger that is forcing air at very high psi across the fuel stack because uh, when you accelerate, you need to make more electricity. When you make more electricity, you need more hydrogen. And to go along with the hydrogen, you need more oxygen. So you have to force air across those membranes um, to create as much electricity as possible. So that whooshing noise, it's a little fan frantically delivering air to the fuel stack. Uh, but apart from that, there's no delay. Now there would be a delay if there wasn't the high voltage battery, but the high voltage battery stores just enough power so when you plant it, you can accelerate. You don't have to wait for the fuel cell system to kind of kick in. Apart from that though, this is one of my all time favorite cars. I love driving the Toyota Mirai. It's just so incredibly soft and squishy. If you've driven a Lexus LS, you've pretty much driven this vehicle because it's the same platform, albeit this one is shortened. Um, super light steering super soft suspension nothing about this is sporty and that's what i love about it so many modern cars are trying to be everything to everybody and they're trying to be comfortable and sporty and have different drive modes and all these different buttons not the toyota mirai it just wafts along in pure quietness with a little trickle of water coming out the tailpipe because that is all that is emitted as you drive along in your hydrogen powered vehicle Let's see how the handling is merging on i5 north not great but if I change the drive mode, sport, still not great. This is a luxury tour. It is not a high performance handler. Get a Tesla if you want to go fast around turns. But here in America, all we do is primarily drive in straight lines for long periods of time. So who cares about going around turns in your luxury sedan? Let's see how the power is. Okay, that's 60. Nine miles 70. ahead on the route. Slow traffic. Not, not a lot in terms of passing power, to be brutally honest. This is not a very powerful vehicle. 
and is perfectly adequate, but if you want the ultimate acceleration, a hydrogen-powered car is probably not the one for you, because the Nexo is kind of quick, um, but not really all that quick, and the Mirai certainly isn't all that fast, but look at this, cruising along in my bubble of solitude, no engine notes, no transmission shifting, it's great. It really is great. Uh, automatic climate control, ventilated seats, this giant screen. I can plug in my Apple CarPlay. I've got navigation. I've got a digital instrument cluster, and I've got 236 miles to go according to the car. And then three minutes later at a hydrogen station, I'd be good enough to go for another 236 miles. Now, is the Toyota Mirai perfect? No. Um, I don't think that the rear seat is particularly roomy. I'm a little bit upset it's only available in rear wheel drive. So if, for example, we do get hydrogen stations in Colorado, this is not going to be much of a winter vehicle. And the technology with the infotainment system is not very good. It's the old school Toyota system. I wish I had the new system out of like the Tundra. However, um, you don't have to really change your driving habits to experience a hydrogen car. It's like driving a gasoline car. Now it's not as convenient as an EV. You can't plug it in at home, for example, and wake up with the full charge. But then again, when you're at a DC fast charging station, you don't have to hang around for 25 or 30 minutes waiting for your charge. And keep in mind, you can also get those lines at a DC fast charging station, not just a hydrogen equipped station. But overall, it's such a good thing to drive. It's such a good thing to look at. Um, and even though it's $68,000 with discounts and rebates and all that, I mean, you can find these for much, much less. Uh, and that's also keeping in mind the tax credits and that kind of thing. I just wish that there were more hydrogen stations. It's going to take a manufacturer like Toyota or Hyundai to really invest in the infrastructure by themselves because otherwise, in my opinion, it's just not happening from like Air Liquide and all these other manufacturers shell. They're just not expanding quick enough around the country for this car to be really successful. They put so many billions into this car, just go the final mile and build the infrastructure and you've got yourself a winner on your hands. Well, let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, this has been Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.